Hello everyone, today I have something new today. So I realized that a lot of you guys ask me to make some kind of podcast-like thing. So I made a community post asking about what are some hot takes or unpopular opinions you have about anything in Genshin Impact right now. And boy, I got a lot of interesting opinions. So for the sake of time, I'm going to look at the interesting, more interesting ones that I've seen. So without further ado, I will take a look at the first one. Extreme Ninja says, The resin system has imbalances. It takes quite a while to build the character due to RNG. Also, daily should at least give half a pull instead of 60. I really do think that the resin system, I agree with the whole imbalancing thing, and it takes quite a while to build a character. Yes, I agree with that. But I feel like it's not really the resin system itself. I feel like it's the amount of resin that we gain. Because partially because of the reasons why it's mostly RNG is mainly because of the artifacts. I don't think the weapons, the talent materials, all that stuff, I don't think that's too big of an issue. I think raising the character, like the boss materials, is not too, not too bad. Uh, sure, it's annoying to get like two drops instead of three. But I feel like ma the main reason why it takes a lot longer is not really due to RNG. But I think that has to do with like how much resin we get because when was the last time that you had over like 10 fragile resin, right? I feel like as soon as we, like people that don't have fragile resin, as soon as they get one, they use it up right away, right? So if we were to increase the amount of fragile resin we get, I feel like this could easily fix the problem. Or maybe it's not just as simple as that, but I feel like that would help a lot. And um, the whole part about dailies, how it should give half a pull instead of 60, so that's like 80 instead of 60. I don't see much of a problem with that, to be honest. Just, you get 20%, or not 20, uh, 33% more Prima Gems instead of from the daily commissions. So I don't think that really hurts too much. So like, one, at least like, one wish every two days? That doesn't seem like too bad, too big of a deal to me. Lani has two things. Overload and Electrocharge are underrated reactions, and Vaporized was overrated. And the second opinion is, you're neutral on Albedo and Kazuha, and can't understand the hype. Talking about Overload and Electrocharge as underrated reactions, and Vaporized as overrated first. So, the main reason why Overload and Electrocharged are not looked as much is because if it look at them as like as a offensive reaction right overload is kind of impractical for like a lot of melee characters bow characters are and um catalyst characters can make do with it but it's not really going to increase damage or dps by a whole lot and since overload knocks people away that's why melee characters don't really take advantage of it too much um electro charge i kind of do agree that I think Electro Charge is kind of an underrated reaction, because although Electro damage is not really too amazing right now, the amount of damage that spreads over time due to Electro Charge, I think it's really underappreciated, and like, Taser teams would just get a lot less representation because Electro as a whole is like, not really too amazing, but I do think Electro Charge is underrated. Now, Vaporize on the other hand, I don't agree with the whole Vaporize is overrated thing, because I think it's perfectly fine. I don't think multiplying your damage is going to be overrated by any chance. Because if you're multiplying your damage, that's a lot. Like a 1.5 multiplier or like a 2 times multiplier is really nothing to mess around with. It's really nothing too light. So the reason why they're so sad after or like why people like Vaporize more is because it multiplies your damage by quite a bit, and like think of it like you're doing 300k, right? With like Child's Burst, for example. Like, without any reactions. Now, if you apply Pyro and then use Child's Burst, that's... And you're doubling your damage, basically. Which is really nothing to ignore. Who knows? You're basically doing two times the damage, like, in one single thing. In one single attack. And that's a really big difference. Sure, it's not, like, practical, but for characters like... A lot of pyro characters like Hu Tao, D Luke, even Yoimiya sometimes. It makes a 
difference. I'm, I'm really telling you. That's why a lot of people like vo vaporize. Now, on to the second one right now. You're neutral on Albedo and Kazuha can't understand the hype. So, let me start with the easy things first. So, Kazuha. The reason why people hype up Kazuha is because he really does a lot. He can increase damage for a lot of elemental characters. He groups up characters. He does a lot of good damage himself. He's fun to play. He's helpful to explore. Like, he just does so much things and in one single character. And with all of that, it, it just makes his value, like, a lot. It just increases his value, like, quite a bit, if that makes sense. Now, Albedo is a little harder to explain. So, Albedo as a whole, he's just a... He's a good character. Because what he does is that he allows you to throw in... Throw away, like your defense artifacts and give it for him to him and by himself he just does a lot of solid damage i don't think he's like as versatile as kazuha but albedo is definitely definitely like really good anna states that well every single character in the game has potential to be godly if built right yes even aloy two the game does not circle around bennett you've heard that surprisingly a lot three overload is fun Extra damage is never a bad thing, and if and all you got to do is EM on your characters. And four, Yai is best girl. <laughs> so, for the first thing, uh, every single character in the game has potential to be godly if right if built right. Yes, that is true. There are videos out there that I think that proves that. And yes, even Aloy. It just. The reason why people don't go towards specific characters, like a lot of the, like the low tier end, is because it does take a lot more effort and time to commit to actually building them. So I don't think a lot of people like like want to commit to how much time and investment they have to do for a character like Aloy, right? The second take is the game does not circle around Bennett. You've heard that surprisingly a lot. You know what, I actually really do agree. Just because Bennett is really, really good and he boosts attack, you can get a you can get around using Bennett. Because the reason why Bennett's so good is because he boosts attack, right? But because he boosts attack and he heals and he does like quite a lot of stuff, he batteries and stuff, he's not the only character that can do that, right? Like there are workarounds, you can use um a viridescent character, like Kazuha or Sucrose. Um, you have Diona that can help fill up the healer role and even shield or even battery just as well. Yeah, a lot of surprise. You can get around with, without using Bennett. Just because Bennett is so good, that doesn't necessarily mean that the whole game circles around him. I'm sure he's obviously he is meta, but I don't really believe that this game really does circle around Bennett, which I, yeah, I do agree. Three, overload is fun. Extra damage is never a bad thing. All you could do is build em onto your characters okay so i agree with the first part overload is fun but on certain characters like um if i'm using a melee character knocking characters around with overload is a little bit irritating right and of course extra damage is never a bad thing but the way that the damage works is that it's not multiplicative from what i'm aware of uh, correct me if i'm wrong but it's not doesn't really multiply your damage compared to like vaporize and melt but yeah, if you build your character, if you build EM, then it's it does help a little bit, but it's not as big compared to vaporize and melt, right? But yeah, I, I agree that overload is fun. And fourth, <laughs> your fourth hot take, Yai is best girl. While I do really like Yai Miko, I I kind of have to disagree. I think Yai Mia, but I think Miko is a close second. All right. And my boy Aizo, he has a really hot take right here. Oyo versus doesn't playtest their game, leaving imbalances and like unfish. Oh my god, I can't speak. Hoyo versus doesn't play and test their game, leaving imbalances like unfinished characters such as Yaimiko. Terrible quality of life like the resin system and artifact farming. So I feel like a lot of people already agree that the resin system and artifact farming is kind of a pain, so I'll just like skip over that for now the first section where hoya verse doesn't play test their game leaving imbalances and so and so i don't really think that is i really don't believe that is true because 
beta testing does exist and the way that beta testing works is that they give it to like they give a beta to oh and correct me if i'm wrong i'm not a game dev designer by any chance but the way i'm aware of like how beta test works is that they give certain people access to a beta of a new update right they allow them to test and balance things accordingly so surely things as yaimiko surely they've doesn't mean that they've missed a lot of spots right it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't necessarily play their games because beta testers they're there to help improve and like make quality of life stuff improve a character right just see what issues are there and fix them right away but I wouldn't say that's for everything part of the game because we don't know exactly what they're testing or from what I know they mainly test um I'm assuming that they mainly test characters right uh I don't know if it's other things in the game that they test uh but as far as I'm aware it they definitely do play tester games maybe not Hoyoverse themselves but they do give access to beta testers Lackey says, well, I'm going to shorten this for time's sake. You think Genshin needs to stop releasing so many characters. You know that's the whole point of the game, but they think they're going to run out of ideas. When Sumeru and other nations come out, it's going to be harder for them to have unique characters. I don't think that's really going to happen, because even though that they may run out of ideas at, at the point, I don't see that stopping them anytime soon. When it comes to gameplay-wise, I do think that they're going to run out of ideas, because there's only so many healers, DPS, sub-DPS, shielders that you can make, and there's only like so many stats that you can make them scale off of, right? There's only like so many interactions that you, ha you can have in a game, unless that they're going to make um, introduce a whole new element, which I don't think it's going to happen. Well, other than like Dendro, of course. Um, it's, it is going to be harder for them to make unique characters, that's the upsetting part about it, which I believe but yeah i do don't think that they are need to stop releasing so many characters because that's the whole point of a gacha game right i don't think that's really going to stop them from b making new characters or creating them because who knows they can make something unique and they make them a lot of characters fun they can take inspiration for like a lot of other games right when how says put more emojis and put kazuha in the standard banner so the, the emojis part, I don't mind too much. I think we should need mo we do need a little more. But putting Kazuha on the standard banner. Now, when it comes to MiHoYo picking and choosing between for characters to be put on standard banner, I don't think Kazuha is going to be one of them because overall he's just like a really really good unit, and I f have a feeling that MiHoYo won't put characters like that on the standard banner purely because of like how powerful they are because if we look at how good the standard banner characters are not a lot of them are super amazing other than like maybe mona and jean a d look you can argue about but um if there was a character that i had to pick and choose to be put on the standard banner like one character in specific i would probably put child because although he is really really good his constellations aren't really too amazing and um overall i don't think he's like powerful but he's really he is meta for sure but kazuha is like a really interesting character to choose to be put on the standard banner all right and last but not least we have zach here saying i don't know if this is really a hot take or not but kaching is the worst five star not counting aloy to me this isn't really a hot take because i feel like a lot of people claim that kaching is among like one of like the worst five stars in the game but claiming that Kaching is the worst five star is a really bold claim because um i don't think she's all she's terrible because i think if there's a chance that electro gets buffed then the two five stars that i have in mind that can take advantage of this a lot more than a lot of other electro characters is one Raiden obviously she is already like top tier even though she is Electro and Kaching because she's also Electro main DPS I don't know that's just me but I still think it's like a bold claim regardless that to claim that Kaching is the worst five star anyways 
everyone, thank you for watching. Um, this is a video I had in mind for quite a long time that I had at the back of my head, so I really appreciate it if you made it to the end. So, yeah, honestly, guys, if you like this type of this type of video, then I'm always down to try to make more. I'll make a community post, and then you can give me your thoughts or hot takes and stuff like that. Yeah, everyone, thank you for watching and drop a sub if you like the content like this and yeah it would be greatly appreciated everyone thank you and take care